Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Lawn Miles Australia. Uh, today we're going to have a chat about Luba 2. Uh, now, just to make sure that I'm not trying to fool anyone, there is no robot here. There's no Luba 2s in Australia at all at this point in time. It's just an image on the screen. Uh, Luba 1 is real, of course. So, look, what I want to run through is essentially Luba 2. Do a quick little rundown of the differences between Luba 1 and Luba 2. Uh, I know that a lot of that information is already available. Uh, on other uh, on other videos online, um, but mostly want to just go through you know what models we're actually receiving in Australia, so it's very clear on what we're actually getting, you know, when we're getting it, and sort of in rough rough sort of numbers on on how many we're actually getting as well. So first up, you know, we'll just go through the basic differences, and obviously the number one difference is the camera. So Luba Two has a 3D camera on top, which Luba One does not have at all. So this camera is going to be used pure and simply to help the robot navigate when the RTK signal, the GNSS signal to the robot uh, is not great. Um, it'll be able to actually rely on that camera and record vision and understand what, uh, what it's actually seeing in front of it. Um, and the robot will travel about 50 odd, well, it's not about, it's exactly so, it'll travel 50 meters uh, without any RTK signal at all or any GNS signal at all uh, before it actually stops. Um, and from yeah, some of the footage that's been available from the US in the last couple of weeks, because they, they have been released in the US now and have been delivered in a few places, um, yeah, that camera system seems to be working very, very well. The robots are able to navigate, turn around at the boundaries and go back the other way uh, without too much trouble at all, as it appears. So, yeah, a lot of high hopes for the camera system. Um, I'm yet to sort of see, have one in my hands myself to, to really understand exactly what it can and can't do. Um, but at first glance, it really does look really good on, uh, on what that camera can achieve above what Luba 1 can achieve. Uh, and of course, the whole reasoning behind having the camera, you know, taking over from the uh, from the GNSS signal, uh, is to allow the robot to travel, you know, under trees better than what Luba One can, you know, through narrow pathways, hopefully between buildings, so it can get in and out the other side, and maybe even mow in between them as well. We still don't know that for sure, uh, but certainly be able to traverse from one area to another um, without, with, you know, within low GNSS signal or even no GNSS signal possibly. So, again. I really haven't had them in my hands yet, so I haven't been able to test them. We're only getting just a bit of imagery, what we see, and some videos we see from uh, from YouTube in the US. And so that's primary number one, you know, primary, primary differences between Luba 1 and Luba 2. Um, the other differences that we've got is just the ultrasonic sensors on the front there. Yeah, there's four ultrasonics on Luba, on Luba 1, and there's only three on Luba 2, because it doesn't really need quite as much, and they've obviously refined how they operate. But the ultrasonics still work in much the same way, and you still have you still have level 1, level 2 and level 0 uh, ultrasonic sensing on the front of it as well. Um, the processor is probably the biggest difference and I don't know the specs of the processors whatsoever, I haven't even looked into it to the truth, but the processor that's inside level 1 is, is quite small and not very powerful compared to what's in level 2 and my understanding is that there's you know, there's quite a lot of um, you know, processing power that's actually left unused in Luba 2, so hopefully over time we'll start seeing even more improvements on what they've actually got. So on the software front, um, because obviously on the hardware front that really is it, there's only the camera, camera vision and the processor itself has changed, just about everything else is the same. There is a hardware high cut version and a low cut or a standard cut version, but we are not getting the high cut versions here in Australia, so I won't talk about the hardware differences on that. Um, the only other real tiny difference is, I think you can see on the camera here, but this uh, this uh, bumper on the side here, which is just a bumper, there is no wires in behind that. A lot of people always call them bumper sensors and things like that, um, but they really are just, just spring-loaded spring, -loaded spring uh, skid plates that actually allow it to, to, to move along things. There's nothing actually in the side underneath that, underneath that cover. Um, but they have changed it, they've taken them away and they're no longer, they're no longer there. Um, there's also a slight change in the back tyres too. You see the rear tyres on Luba 2 here. Um, it's got more of a bar tread uh, as opposed to Luba 1 here. It's got a little bit of a bit, slightly different tread on it. But basically, they're saying that the Luba 2 actually can do 80% slope as opposed to 75% slope on Luba 1. Um, and that can only obviously be just pure in terms of that tread design change in the rear tyre. Um, just getting that little bit extra. But we're, yeah, we're splitting hairs here a bit because we're talking about you know, 37 degrees versus 38 degrees. It's not, not a massive difference, but still an improvement. So then on the, uh, on the on the software front, um, that's where really all the changes really are. Um, uh, Luba 2, you're going to be able to actually view through that camera on the front as well, so you're going to be able to get live vision on that camera as it comes through. Um, 
you're going to be able to do pattern cutting, so actually mowing, in, uh, mowing a, an actual pattern into your lawn, like a shape or a, a letter uh, into your lawn. Um, again, not sure how well this is going to work. That functionality either has not been released yet in the app or in the, in the firmware, or it's just been released. Uh, but I haven't actually seen any actual images or any videos of real life uh, lubers uh, cutting uh, patterns into the lawn or cutting shapes into the lawn. Can't wait to sort of see that. Can't wait to trial it when we actually get them ourselves. And, um, but on the software front, again, yes, yeah, so limitations, much like Luber 1, where you had the Luber 1000, 3000, and 5000, and the only real difference was, was software limitations, um, other than the, the smaller battery in Luber 1. In Luber 2, it is exactly the same. Luber 1 has got the smaller 4.5 amp hour battery, and Luber 3, th uh, sorry, Luber 2 1000 has got a smaller 4.5 amp hour battery, and the 3000, 5000, and 10,000 square meter model have the 10 amp hour battery. I think it's a 9.8 or something like that, actually, when you pull it out. Um, so, again, the limitations are all going to be software limited. Um, speed limitations, again, uh, so I've been told, and again, everything I say here is all stuff that I've been told or what I've researched, not what I've actually experienced because we don't have one here. Uh, so, the speed, the, the travel speed of Luba 2s is the 1,000 and 3,000 can travel up to 0.4 meters per second, and the 5,000 and 10,000 will travel up to 0.6 meters per second. So, yet to actually test that, and actually on that note, anyone from the US that actually is viewing this video, um, and they can prove me wrong on anything I possibly say, please put a comment underneath, because I'd really like to know uh, exactly what your maximum travel speeds are for the models that you've got. Um, and just it just basically anything anything that I say here that's uh, that's not actually correct, please correct me so I can see in the comments and we'll uh, and we'll address that later on. Um, the area so Luba One when it reached its maximum area, it was a little bit grey. So Luba One was a memory limitation uh, in the actual robot itself. So when your map was complicated, you couldn't map. You know, a lot more than the 1,000 square meters for the 1,000 square meter model. You might have got to 1,200 maybe or something like that before it stopped, before it said you, you had no more no more area. But if you mapped it in a really simple area and just a big big open space, I think there were some customers customers there, I think that managed to get Luba 1,000 up to around about I think nearly up to 1,600 square meters. They managed to map even 1,700 square meters with Luba 1,000. So it was it was grey. There was no real hard limitations on how much you could actually map. It was only you had to go and do it and see how far, see what you could get away with. But in a roundabout way, they were around about 20%, you know, 10, 10 to 20%. So Luba 1000 was around 1200 to 1300. 3000 was around about that 3600. Uh, and the 5000, you could actually map all the way up to 10,000 square meters with the firmware update that they brought out uh, quite a few months back now. So the 5000 square meter model was actually you know, equivalent to the 10,000 square meter model that they've now released in Luba 2. Um, so Luba 2's limitations on there are, that appear to be fixed and firm, and again, anyone in the US, please test this and tell me if I'm wrong, but I've got my little cheat sheet here in front of me as well, but the, the Luba 1000 has got a software limitation in the app of 1200 square meters, so I think that's going to be a hard limitation. You get to 1200, that's it, you won't get anything more. The 3000 square metal has got a hard limitation of 3500. The 5,000 can go up to 6,000 square meters, and the 10,000 can map up to 12,000 square meters. Now, and again, I think they are hard limitations, and again, if someone can put a comment below to let me know if they've got any experience with actual Luba 2s and, uh, and, and that, what, what that limitation is and whether it is a, a fixed, hard, you know, that's it, you can't go any further. Um, the other limitation in here in Luba 2 is the areas, but to our relief, they have increased the areas significantly. So back in Luba 1, all we had was the Luba 1000 was three areas, 3000 was six areas, and the 10,000, or the 5000 I should say, uh, was 10 areas. In Luba 2, they've increased that to 10 areas for Luba 1000, 20 areas for Luba 3000, 30 areas for Luba 5000, and 60 areas for Luba 10,000. So lots and lots of areas, so it shouldn't really have too many limitations you know, on how many areas you need when you get the robot. I think at the end of the day, even the Luba 1000 with 10 areas really should satisfy pretty much anyone who's got 1,000 square meters of lawn to mow, uh, right up to yeah, 60 areas in the 12,000 square meter maximum uh, mapping ability um, is 
surely more than you actually need. I can't see anyone actually uh, getting to, you know, I, I really can't see anyone getting past probably 10 or 15, maybe 20 areas, probably maximum, unless you're trying to do uh, some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of area that you've just got lots and lots and lots of very small lawns to travel through. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's sort of mostly, now the cutting height is still the same, so 20, cutting height is 25 to 70 millimetres on loop 2. Um, and like I said before, we are not getting the high cut version, so we don't get the high cut version in Australia. Run times and charge times are all about the same as what they were before. Uh, they're saying 150 minutes to charge the 10 amp hour battery and 180 minute run time. And a 90, 90 minutes the charge time on the, on the four and a half amp hour battery um, and 120 minutes run time. Now, we've had you know, sort of mixed results when it comes to that, so really obviously comes down to what grass you're cutting on, what sort of, and what sort of uh, length the grass is on how, what your run time actually can be. Um, with the Luba 1000s, we've got some customers that report that you know, they're only getting just over an hour out of the run time and some customers are reporting a lot more. So yeah, like I say, it's, it's a guide, um, but it's obviously a guide at the upper end that they tell us when you can get three hours out of a, out of a Luba 3000, 5000 and 10,000 and two hours out of a 1000. That's generally on the upper limit of things. So that's all there is when it regards to you know, Luba and Luba 2, Luba 1, Luba 2, and the, and the changes they've actually made between the two. Um, I don't think I've actually missed anything. I do know there are some changes with how the bumper actually inserts into the front of the robot. Um, and again, there's some videos on YouTube on, on exactly that, some unboxing videos and that, where you can see how they've done that. I do know there's been a couple of hardware changes in regards to the front wheel motors are different. Um, the few things inside have actually been sort of configured differently, but most of all, it's that main board with the processor that now has a silicon chip on it that's far more powerful than it was before. 4G, I didn't mention 4G, or the antenna. I'm sure someone's yelling at the screen telling me what I've forgotten right now. Um, Luba 2, Luba 2 has got a 4G SIM slot in it that allows you to now put the 4G SIM in and operate it. Now, we haven't got any details of exactly the frequencies that the robot's going to be able to use and how it's going to operate between Optus and Vodafone and Telstra and everything else. And we're really going to have to test that when we actually get them in our hands. But we've got a 4G SIM card in Luba now as well as Wi-Fi. So you can choose to either run it on Wi-Fi, the same as Luba 1 was, was run, or you can insert a SIM, a SIM card and obviously you can put that on some kind of data plan of some description. And then Luba 2 will actually transmit and communicate via 4G which is fantastic because that also allows it to have you know, GPS tracking if it's possibly stolen or anything like that. If you've got to locate the robot, um, you'll be able to locate the robot. How the power to that system works, again, I'm yet to find out. If anyone knows that from the US, please put it in the comments below. Um, yeah, is it fail safe? Yeah, can the Luba not be turned off anymore? So when it basically, so that if someone does take it, they obviously can't turn the robot off and just stop the 4G signal from transmitting. I assume that's all covered, but we won't know that until we've got them in our hands. So the secondary function of that 4G though is also to do with the antenna, with the uh, with the RTK antenna base or base antenna. So. If you connect the RTK base antenna to Wi-Fi, so you connect it to your own Wi-Fi in your property and it's got a Wi-Fi receiver in the, in the antenna, um, then that allows the antenna to transmit the correction data that if anyone's watched the previous video on how RTK works, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so the correction data can be transmitted via the internet back through the 4G card in the robot um, and then actually communicate that way. Now, that allows the antenna and the robot to be up to five kilometers distance between those two things. And like I said the, the, the transmission or the correction data is actually being sent via the internet, through the Wi-Fi, via the internet, and back to the robot via 4G. Um, as far as any delays in that, again, we need to test to see exactly how that works. But that functionality is quite proven in things like Crest up here. Um, so Crest uses the same, that, that same functionality of transmitting that data via 4G. Um, so yes, yeah, so the, the technology is quite proven, so it, honestly I'm expecting really good things from that and again we'll test that distance uh, once we can and see what actually happens when you go outside that 5 kilometer radius you know, to see if it just gets less accurate or whether it just stops working, we'll, we'll find out that in due, in, 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 uh, in due, in due course. And, okay, so sorry, I definitely forgot a major one there uh, when it comes to hardware changes. Uh, I think that really is it, I don't think I forgot anything now, I hope. 
Uh, so let's talk about Australia and what we're actually getting. So like I said, we're not getting the high cut versions, we're only getting the standard cut versions. We are getting the 1000, the 3000, the 5000 and the 10,000 and they are all on our website right now and available for pre-sale. That pre-sale at the moment is expected to be fulfilled in June. So at the moment we're being told that the, uh, the first shipment will arrive in June, hopefully that's early June, we'll find out, we'll get a bit more information as time goes on. And in that shipment, you know, we're sort of talking you know, 250 odd units into Australia and that's sort of it. So if you are keen to get hold of a Luba 2, um, I urge you to find a dealer like ourselves if you can, uh, find a dealer and purchase it on pre-order because they will most likely all be sold out well and truly before they arrive into Australia. Even being winter, going into winter, I'm not really, I'm, I'm still fairly well expecting all these units to be sold out. And then it'll be another month or another two months, but probably hopefully only another month, but, but maybe two, uh, to get the next container in something sort of before we see another 100 or 200 units into Australia. So they're not going to just literally sort of bombard Australia with, uh, with quantities, they're not gonna roll in, um, but there should be enough quantities for the people that actually do want to pick them up, particularly as winter's coming on obviously and the grass is not growing. Uh, there's gonna be less of demand moving into winter and then hopefully by the time we get through to, uh, to September, October, when the grass starts growing fast again, um, we should obviously have more containers in and hopefully stock won't be an issue. I hope, I really hope. Um, but that's where we are as far as what's coming in, what's available, and, and like I said, if you really wanna get a hold of, of Luba within the next, you know, probably if you wanna try and get your Luba before August, uh, then I'd probably advise you to very quickly get online somewhere. Uh, get find find a dealer like I said like ourselves um, and get your pre-order in as soon as you can um, so I think that's really all I wanted to actually really cover to tell you the truth in this video just to go through the, the, the differences in Luba 2 versus Luba 1 uh, and let's let you know about stock and how it's gonna how it's gonna come into Australia and what's available um, obviously like always um, you know the dealer network that we have in Australia, you know, there is only a few of us and there's only a few of us that actually do sell volumes of these things and repair in house. So be very cautious on where you actually do get your Luba from. Uh, make sure that you've got you know, after sales from that, from the, from that, uh, from that supplier. Uh, make sure they repair in house. If they do not repair in house, your Luba will be sent away for repair if it needs to be repaired. Um, so that, that can take significant time. So. Make sure that uh, that yeah, you know, when you do buy from someone like ourselves, you know we repair everything in in store here. We have all the spare parts. We keep spare parts in stock here. We don't rely, you know, on the importer to actually give us the spare parts for every every robot that needs to be fixed. We keep them in stock here all the time. Uh, so that helps our customers out quite a lot. Um, but that's sort of it, guys. Look. As always, if you have any questions at all about Luba or any other robot that's behind me here or any other robot on the market, whatever that might be, uh, you can email us at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au. Um, you can check out a lot of information on our socials, so TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram. We post a lot of little bits and pieces here and there, what we do on a daily basis there, so it gets posted, posted on there. Um, Check out our website. Our website's currently being completely revamped, so it's going to change quite a lot. So that every week or so, you'll probably start seeing changes on our website. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of information on there about about Luba and about all the other robots and and all our videos and everything else are listed there as well, as well as on on YouTube as well. Um, and look to help me out in regards to making sure we get these things out to as many people as possible. Uh, as far as these videos are concerned, like and subscribe to our channel just so that you, you know, just so that uh, the, the uh, YouTube algorithm loves us a bit more and uh, and starts feeding our information back out to, to more people so they can learn from what we put up thanks for watching see you on the next one